this one verse, and today I'm going to be talking about my TBR for this February. So it is Black History Month in the U.S., so there's a lot of good readathons going on, and I'm going to try and do two this month. Participating in the Black Literature Challenge, hosted by Seiji of the Artisan Geek, and I'm participating in Blackathon, hosted by Bowties and Books, The Novelosh, and Francina Simone is usually a co-host, but this year she is not. I think it's because of her new book that is coming out soon. So for the Black Literature Challenge, the prompts are to read a book written before the 21st century, a book with a Black person on the cover, a book outside of your comfort zone, and a book written by an author outside of the U.S. or the U.K. And for that, I picked The Famished Road by Ben Okri. This was written in 1991 by Ben Okri, who is Nigerian. And I don't really know how I would classify the genre, maybe like magical realism, because it splices sort of our world with the spirit world. And it's not something I've read a whole lot of. Oh, and I'm based out of the U.S., but I got this book at a thrift store, and I guess there was someone who lives in the U.K. who donated books, because this is the U.K. cover, and see the black person on the cover right there. And I've sort of started reading this. So the basic premise is that Azaro, the main character, is an Obangji. So the idea behind an Obangji is that they are children who are born, die at a young age, and are reborn in the family to cause their parents like, strife and turmoil. And Azaro is an Obanji who decides that he wants to stay in the human world, and so he kind of slips between the world, the spirits, and the humans, because the spirits that he left behind aren't happy with his choice. And I sort of started reading it already. I don't think I'll be able to finish it this month, because it is a so read for me. It's very similar in style to Amos Tutuola stuff, which I really enjoy, but Amos Tutuola's works are a lot shorter in, than this. Like, you can see how thick it is, and like, the size of the, the text, there's a lot of words. And I'm just taking frequent breaks as I read, so I don't think I'll get done this month, but I'm gonna count it for this readathon anyway. And then the last prompt for the Black Literature Challenge was to read a book recommended by Ina. So, uh, Seiji created a series of videos where depending on your answer to certain questions it would like give you like more questions like a survey sort of like a branching off survey and I was recommended The Deep by River Solomon which I've already read and I don't feel like rereading this month so I will not be doing that prompt. So that's everything for the Black Literature Challenge. So for Blackathon I'm going to be doing team science fiction and fantasy. I'm kind of like playing with the rules on this one because I just have like books I want to read and I'm going to just try and find, like, pigeonhole them into the prompts as best as I can. So the first prompt for Blackathon was to read a science fiction or fantasy book featuring LGBTQ plus characters. For that I'm reading Magnifique Noir Volume 2 by Brianna Lawrence. I gushed about this a lot in my Christmas haul slash book mail video and I realized that as much as I talked about this I feel like I didn't really give a good synopsis of the plot. So the idea is that there's this troop of black queer magical girls called Magnifique Noir. They're all college age and they have magical girl personas that they use to fight monsters. The newest iteration of the group involves uh, Brie, Mariana, Lonnie, and the mysterious Prism Pink. But before they had the Magnifique Noir moniker, there was another troop like 20 or so years ago who fought under the same name. Uh, Blaze, their mentor, was part of that troop. And the end of the last one, Prism Pink has shown up, and all the other girls know each other in real life, but they've like met Prism Pink in her magical girl persona, but they don't know who she is IRL. And so they're trying to figure out like who is she, because I think they fight together and they work together really well, but they just don't know who she is in real life. And they're like curious. And also Starlight Blue, a member of the previous troop around the same time as Blaze has shown up. And from what I can tell, there is trouble afoot because the original troop disbanded for not great reasons because of disputes and stuff. So that's what's going on in this book. The next prompt was to read a book 
to an Afrofuturist society that is complex and advanced. And for that, I'm reading Temper by Nikki Drayden. I'm not entirely sure like where the setting is exactly, but for, when I read the dust jacket, it said it's set on the southern tip of an African continent that could have been. So to me, that sounds like speculative slash Afrofuturist. So I'm going to go with it. And the idea of this book is that it's based on in a world where your vices are like tattooed on your body so everyone can see. It's like a mark of shame. And the main character, Alvin, has six vices and he has a twin, Kasim, who only has one. And Alvin is sort of celebrated and appreciated in his own right. But he knows because of the number of vice tattoos that he has that like he's really only going to go so far and he's jealous of golden brother Kasim who seems like he's gonna have this great life and that's just not gonna include him. One day Alvin starts hearing these voices in his head like prompting him to commit more vices and drink blood and stuff and he has to figure out why he's hearing these voices and how to make them stop. So that is the premise of Temper. The next prompt was to read a graphic novel by a black author featuring black characters and for that I chose Queen of Bad Dreams. It's written by Danny Lore and the art is by a whole bunch of people. Let me list them off to you. Uh, Jordi Perez, Deerbla Kelly, Kim McLean, and Andworld. If I were to describe this book from what I read on the dust jacket, it would basically be like Men in Black but for dreams. So the main character Dar is part of some organization that has to recapture dreams. This is a world where dream figments escape from people's minds into reality and can kind of run amok. And Dar's job is to either capture the dreams and like return them to the dream world or to help them assimilate into reality. And one day a really powerful dream figment escapes like nothing that Dar has ever seen before. And Dar has to figure out how to capture this dream figment and also while doing so Dar discovers why dreams started escaping into reality in the first place. So I am kind of surprised I didn't hear about this because I feel like I really keep my ear to the ground for new comic books coming out by black authors. It sounds like really like up my alley but I just never even heard about it coming out. A little disappointed in myself but it's it was it's always a nice surprise to hear about a title that like I haven't heard about before. So excited for this. The next prompt is to read an SF book featuring a cunning or ambitious black protagonist and for that I'm reading Mindscape by Andrea Harrison. I'm just going to read off the dust jacket for this one because it's a little hard to explain. It says the barrier will not be ignored. For 115 years this extraterrestrial epidimensional entity has divided the earth into warring zones. Although a treaty to end interzonal wars has been hammered out, Power-hungry politicians, gangsters, and spiritual fundamentalists are determined to thwart it. Celestina, the treaty's architect, is assassinated, and her protege, Eleni, a talented renegade and one of the few able to negotiate the barrier, takes up her mantle. Now Eleni and a motley crew of allies risk their lives to make the treaty work. Can they repair their fractured world before the barrier devours them completely? So I read an excerpt of this, and I think it was... Reading the Bones, which was an anthology edited by, I think it was Sheree Renee Thomas. And I was intrigued. I think the protagonists are Celestina and Eleni, and they are cunning and ambitious in that Celestina is trying to set up this treaty that like a lot of people don't want to go through. And Eleni is also helping with that and tries to use her powers to like go between this barrier that like most people can't cross on their own to further this plot and set herself up in a good place in this new world. I was like really intrigued by the excerpt so I'm excited to read this. Also it randomly uses German words for things like I don't understand how ethnicity and culture works in this world. It's explained that it's very different from our world because of how the barrier has divided up pockets of countries and stuff but the people who can go between barriers are called Vermittlers and they use German and like I took German in high school so I'm just like pleasantly surprised that I actually have a use for it because I never thought I'd see the day it'd actually be somewhat practical to speak German. 
So I'm kind of using some of the teen contemporary prompts, sort of, kind of, not really, because I'm really only reading one contemporary book. That is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This was for the prompt for the lighthearted book with a powerful romantic or platonic bond. In this book, the main character, Imani, is a teenage single mom, and she's reaching the end of high school, and she has to figure out what job she's going to get, like what she's going to do with her life. Because not only does she have to support herself, she also has to support her young child. But she really wants to be a chef. And that seems kind of frivolous or like not in her best interest. But her high school offers a cooking class and she takes it. And drama. As she has to figure out, is she going to continue to do the thing that she loves? Or is she going to try and do something else? Do something that might make her more money, that might seem more practical. And I've, I've only really heard good things about this book, so I'm very excited to read it. I mean, I really love the cover. I have a soft spot for books about food or chefs. I think it's just like a vicarious living thing for me because I am very, very mediocre cook and I really don't like cooking at all. So I think it's like a, a way for me to be like, oh, look at all the wonderful food I could be eating if I <laughs> had any talent, any desire to practice. I heard there's a really strong friendship in this book between Amani and one of her high school friends who stands by her when she gets pregnant. So very excited for this book. There's another one that said to read a book about black people not in the U.S. It doesn't center the black American narrative and for that I'm reading Do You Dream of Terror 2 because black people are in space and that's not the United States. Also, the space program they're part of is British, and if I remember correctly, all the black characters in this book are like Kenyan Brits, so there you go. And Do You Dream of Terror 2? It's almost an alternative history because it's set in like 2012. But in this world, climate change is going on as it is in ours, and scientists are worried that Earth won't be habitable for much longer, and they are very surprised when they find out that there's a planet within a few light years of distance, well, I think it's like a couple decades light years of distance, that is habitable for humans, and they call it Terra 2. And the plan is to send six teenagers into space with a few adults who are supervising and providing other help roles. And it's going to take them about 10, 20 years to get to Terra 2, and they're going to be the first people to start like setting up settlements and colonizing for other people from Earth to come to Terra 2. Oh, it all sounds really great on paper, like what could go wrong, and of course something goes wrong. I'd maybe describe it as Lord of the Flies in space, I think is about how I think things are going to go down. I sort of started a reaction thread for this on Twitter. I was really excited when I first saw the cover because it had a black astronaut on it, but that was just the UK cover. This is the US cover, and it is kind of um, generic, all right. If this had been the only cover I'd seen, I definitely wouldn't have been as geeked to pick up this book as I was, so there's that. And the last prompt is to read a book featuring a revolutionary black character, and for that I'm going to sort of count Zara the Windseeker. Uh, it's like a fantasy novel, and I feel like fantasy novel main characters always have to be kind of revolutionary. They're leading some giant war or some giant like societal upheaval and I'm assuming that something similar is going to happen in this book. I'm buddy reading this with Arlene of Lock Press Books, and if it doesn't really fulfill the prompt, I'm not too torn up about it. I was going to read it anyway. So the dust jacket says, In the northern Uni kingdom, fear of the unknown runs deep, and children born Dada are rumored to have special powers. 13-year-old Zara Sami feels like a normal girl. She grows her own floral computer, as mirrors sewn onto her clothes and stays clear of the forbidden greeny jungle. But unlike other children in the village of Kirky, Zara was born with the telling Dada locks. Only her best friend, Dari, isn't afraid of her, even when something unusual begins happening, something that definitely makes Zara different. The two friends determine to investigate, edging closer and closer to danger. When Dari's life is threatened, Zara must face her worst fears alone, including the very thing that makes her different. In this exciting debut novel, things aren't always what they seem. Monkeys tell fortunes, plants offer wisdom, and a teenage girl is the only one who stands a chance at saving her best friend's life. So that's Zara the One Seeker. I've read all like the novels by Nettie Akorfor, 
except for this and Kabu Kabu. So I'm kind of tidying things up now, finishing her, her publication list. So that's everything. So that's everything on my TBR. Um, what do you think of my book choices? If you're participating in the Black Literature Challenge or Blackathon, what are you reading? If you like the video, please like, comment below if you have something to say, and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with me. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.